Hey, what's up everybody? This is Joshua Casper. I'm here with another Ableton Live video tutorial. Today we're going to be checking out the mid-side saturation rack that I shared on Facebook a couple days ago. Uh, I'm going to show you what it is and maybe try to build it from scratch, though it is quite complicated and I don't know if I remember all the steps, so you'll have to forgive me if I don't make it all the way through the tutorial portion. But essentially what we have here is a really nifty little rack that's probably overcomplicated for how much you might use it. But what we can do here is designate a frequency band of which we can add saturation to. And not only can we add saturation to just a specific band of a the full frequency range, but we can decide how much saturation we add to the center audio versus how much saturation we add to the stereo audio or just the audio that lives in the left and the right field. It's really nitpicky, I guess. I don't know too many people that might want to get into this, but along the way, I learned a bunch of stuff about how to make racks this sort of complicated still sound good and be useful in the end. This is based on a plugin by SoundSpot called Halcyon that does a similar thing, a lot better than this rack does, but I'm kind of in this mode of trying to recreate plugins that have come out inside of Ableton Live without leaving the native device set. And that's what I've done here. So essentially what we have here is a low crossover point and a high crossover point, and the frequency range in between these two numbers is what's going to be affected by the saturators. And we also have a control of how much the mid audio is affected versus the side audio. So all the way up to 127, only the audio in the stereo field will be affected by the saturation amount, which you input right here. And if we go all the way to the left to zero, only the center audio will be affected by the drive of the saturator, which you input right here. The limiter gain is just a limiter on the end of the chain because they're at the frequency crossover points. Uh, there is a little bit of addition to the decibel level there because of the way uh, Ableton Live's EQ8 works. It only has a times four. It doesn't really have a flat wall. And that's probably a good thing in most cases. But for something like this, you do get a little bit of addition uh, to the frequency crossover points. So you got to keep that in mind. Again, we're just trying to make super complicated plugins using Ableton Live devices these days. So we got to we got to win where we can, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just going to go ahead and play this little track and really dry the saturator because this is meant to be just a little bit of flavor, a little bit of extra flavor on top of your final mix. It's not meant to be like this thing that transforms your final track. It's just meant to uh, to help it out and add that little bit of extra saturation to maybe something that's a little dull. So let's go ahead and check it out. So right now I've got it set to just the side audio. So this is the only drive that's gonna actually do anything to the track. And as you can tell, you can hear the difference. And if we go over to the side, and you can hear the difference there in the stereo field. But for something like a saturator uh, with these particular settings, you know, something like one dB of drive and two on the side is really all you're gonna need to get a, a little bit of extra flavor. So if I put this back at 64, which is gonna be an equal amount of balance between the mid and the side being affected. Just kind of fills it out adding those extra harmonics up there. And maybe I might even go a little bit heavy on the side as opposed to the middle. So, I mean, that's what the rack is for. Uh, it's really a mastering tool and mastering isn't meant to completely transform the track. It's just meant to add a little bit extra than maybe you missed during the mixing stage. So how to make this thing, it's fairly complicated. I don't know if you guys want to get into it, but uh, you know what, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm going to throw the final rack up on the blog. Uh, so if you want to just download it, it'd probably be best uh, if you don't want to follow along with this tutorial because it's going to be quite long, I'm pretty sure. But you know what, let's do it just for fun. Go ahead and drop an audio effects rack on here. Drop an EQ8 on a, to a chain and duplicate that chain three twice. Make it three chains. Rename the top one low the middle one mid slash effects, and this bottom one high. 
And for the low, we're going to turn everything off but one filter. And I always tell you that you got to turn these filters off if you're not going to use them because if they're just on, like right here, it's not doing anything, but it is taking away from the CPU. So turn them off if you're not going to use them. Right click the frequency for filter one, map to macro one. Pretty great. Mid one, we're going to use a bandpass instead of the low shelf. So we're going to go times four, times four, for filter one, map to the same macro knob as the low pass. And for macro two, go ahead and map to macro two, or filter two, map to macro two. And now as the frequency of the low shelf moves to the left, so I'm at 167, if I go over to the mid, it too is at 167. So there's never gonna be a gap of frequency being passed through everything. And that's what we wanna do with the high as well. Again, turn everything off, but the one filter and times four and map that to macro two. And now essentially we have three band filtering system with no frequency ever being left out, being passed through this rack. And there is a little bit of uh, doubling up on the frequency crossover points, but that's the best we can do without using some other awesome plugin like Ozone ZQ, which still has it, but you have a bigger dip. We only have times four here, so we gotta, you know, we gotta do what we gotta do. So all the goodness is gonna happen on the mid effects chain. But one thing that's really cool is if we want in the end to affect everything, if we move it all the way over to 22 kilohertz, uh, we are gonna be affecting effectively all the way up to the end of the spectrum there. If we want to affect the entire frequency range, we just got to move it down to 30 hertz. And there's a little bit of roll off right here, but it's not a lot. We don't have to worry about it. And you can see that it's actually made up a little bit down here. So these are just some things to think about, but uh, they're not really that important for this tutorial. So the next thing we're going to do is drop an audio effects rack on the mid channel here, the mid chain, right at the end of that EQ. And now we need to make some EQ8s again. Put an EQ8 on there. So let's look at the chains and we're going to duplicate it. And for this top chain, we're going to go wet slash mid. For this bottom one, wet slash side. And for wet slash mid, we're going to change the mode to mid side. And we're going to jump over to the side and turn everything off but this one. And go ahead and put it on times four and just dip it all the way off. So now if we play this audio, no, there's gonna be no side audio coming out of this particular chain. If we go back into the mid, we can actually turn all of these filters off. So again, saving the CPU, if we solo it. That's essentially mono audio right there. And if we go over to the wet, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna go mid side and we're gonna completely wipe out the mid audio here using that same method. And on the side again, just turn everything off because we don't need any filterings. We just want the audio to pass through. And if we solo this, that's gonna be just the side audio. And right now we're letting everything pass through. So that's good to leave it like that while we're building it. So I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this now and we're gonna call it dry. So wet or dry side. Now let's make it lowercase just to keep things going. And duplicate this and rename it dry. And let's go ahead and change the color just so we can keep track of this stuff. A little bit easier this way. Okay, so now we have some wet channels, and that's where we want to add our saturator. Let's jump over to the saturator and put it right on the mid and put it right on the side. And we're going to leave it right at 100%, and we only need to map the drive to any macro knobs. So let's go ahead and do that. And this is for the mid, so we want to rename that just so we can keep track. And let's jump to the side, map the drive. And again, we want to rename it so we can keep track. And let's just put it at zero for now. 
and we're not done here. What we want to do is jump into the chain section. We want to map the chain selector to macro three. It's going to say chain selector. That's fine. And as I move the macro, you see that the chain selector slides over. And what we want to do is for the mid wet, we want to have, we want to take both the big blue part and drag it all the way over to 126, not 127 because on 127, we're going to want just wet and then click the ramp. And then we want to come over to dry side and do the same thing to 126 and over. So now when we have it like this, we should have a full stereo mix, but we can affect the mid-centered audio with the saturator we have on that particular chain. And we're going to want to turn these off so we don't blow our eardrums. So as I A-B that, you can see there's no big jump in audio because we have the chains set up the way we need them. For the, for the wet side, we're going to take it and move it over to one. Again, because on this, when we have the chain selector all the way at zero, we only want it to be wet, mid, and dry side. And we're going to pull this over like this to 127 and then make the ramp here again. Let's bring it over to one, drag it over. And oh my goodness, and you got to move up and you see I need to actually click and drag over to one. And now as I move this, we should be okay. But when we get into the middle, there's a little bit of addition, a little bit too much. And we're going to fix that in one second. But let's just go ahead and hear what we have for right now. Let's go ahead and turn everything on. So there's a bit of addition right here, and what we're going to do is use the map control. So what we're going to do is map all of these to the chain selector macro. And go into map mode, and I forgot what it was, but essentially when the macro is all the way here, we want the mid to be negative 1. And when it's all the way on the other side, we want it to be, I think, negative five is what I decided. So here, wet side mixer, we want dry side, we're gonna go negative one, negative five, and then we're gonna do the reverse here. So negative five on this side, Oop. negative five here, and negative one, and negative five, and negative one. And now as I when I'm in the center, we should get a better balance of the addition of the all the tracks combined. Let's check it out. So it's a little bit too much still and you can come in and tweak this however you want. Let's go negative six. Let's go negative six. Let's go negative six. And negative six, jump out. So that's a much smoother transition and there's not getting overpowering when we're in the center and that's what we're looking for. We want it to be balanced when it's at 64 right here in the middle. And there we go. So now we have the the meat of this thing done. Uh, the really important stuff is right here. This is the balance control. We we'll rename it and call it balance. Oh. And now we want to map those to here, but let's go ahead and make sure we say hi, cross, and rename low, cross. When you're getting into racks and into side of racks and side of racks, you definitely want to keep everything nice and labeled. And we can go ahead and map these to that macro five. Let's go six and let's go three. And luckily the names update inside of there. So essentially we're done now. Uh, we could stop there if we wanted to, but because we're going to be adding drive to essentially a ma uh, pre-master, we're going to want to put a limiter on just in case because we don't want to ever be redlining. So what we're going to do is actually bounce out of there. I'm going to go ahead and drop a limiter on the end right here. Control A to select everything and hit group. 
And then just one more time, we're gonna map this to macro one, map this to macro two, map the balance to macro three, this to five, this to six, and jump into that limiter. And we can just add that gain to macro four, just so we can have the control if we want it. And whenever you map anything, they jump right down to their lowest value. So we can jump up to like 120 Hertz, maybe 5K over here. Balance, again, I like to leave it at 64, just as like the default starting point when you drop the rack onto the track. Gain, zero, mid drive, and we're started at zero and zero, just because we don't want when you drop the rack on, we don't want it to be crazy. But if you wanted to like sell a rack like this, you might make it where the balance is a little bit towards the stereo one and two db it depends on what you want to do how you like to do stuff and we have two extra macro knobs that we can start assigning stuff to if we wanted to i'm not going to do that right here right now but we can rename it it side set something like that and we can uh, actually come into the map mode and adjust the drive amount because the drive can get quite nasty. There's no way we're ever going to want 36 dB a drive on here. So I think I went 10, negative 10. So I'd go 10, 10. Again, you don't need to do this if you don't want to, but I like to. And that's, that's pretty much it besides coloring stuff, but that's just artistic and fun. So we're not going to do that here in this video, but that cool so again I never go to 10 I might go to 1 put it around 80 just to start and uh, go ahead and save it one more time boom and there you go now you have your your mid side balance control you have your frequency band selectors you have a limiter gain if you want to pump it even more than it already is and then you have the saturation drive amount right at your fingertips inside of just these six macro knobs with two macro knobs to spare if you wanted to put more effects on there, if you wanted to add some volume controls or maybe EQ controls or something like that. But there you go. That's how you make the rack. That's how you get really crazy and do way too much work for next to nothing. Maybe you learned something. I hope so. We'll see you next time. Peace.